Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to my Git tutorial series. In this series I would like to explain what Git is, uh, why you might want to use it, uh, what it's for, um, and how to of course use it. Now during this series I'm not going to pick any specific application, GUI application, because Git actually has a lot of graphical uh, interfaces to to choose from. Uh, I'm not actually going to push any one or the other. I'm actually going to show you a bunch of them, and I'll let you uh, decide which one which one you prefer. So first of all, what even is Git? And I could probably sit here and tell you that oh, Git is um, a version control system. It's also this tree tree of changes so-called commits um, that grows as you commit more and more changes um, i could also tell you i could tell you the official definition but of course uh, for simplicity i think we should stick to the notion of uh, it's a it's a tree of changes and what i mean by a tree is you make changes to your application so in this example here you can see a visualization of a git uh, repository don't worry about the the terms like what is head what does master mean what is this weird string here first commit what does it mean what's the green thing um and just think of it as um that green dot or that, that green bubble is a state of your application right uh, for example, when you open your application for the first time, you've got maybe a pre-generated hello world or uh, something similar. Uh, that's a state of your application. When you're typing or make, adding new classes and refactoring, that's modifying the state of it, right? Uh, it's kind of like a save point, right? Whenever you hit control S, that's saving a different state. And you implicitly understand that uh, when you're uh, making changes to a file and then decide that oh this is not actually what you want to do and maybe you control maybe our control z doesn't uh, quite reach far back you implicitly know that uh, if you didn't save it um, you know through the changes you can just close it without saving and that will uh, return you back to the state so a commit is kind of like a control s right it's kind of like saving that that state of your application however you don't do it um, with just a simple command, although you could, uh, because you ideally would like to add a comment message or like a like a little title that says, "Hey, what what, what you changed?" Um, and so, what do I mean by a tree? Well, I'm just going to use these uh, simple commands for the visualization. Don't worry about these commands or or anything. Uh, you know, usually if you choose a graphical user interface, you won't actually type in like commands. This is just a visualization, so please don't worry about that. Um, notice what happens when I kind of like press the control S of Git, right? When I make a new commit, right? Okay, it adds at the end of it. And you could imagine that as my application grows, I can make uh, as many uh, commits as I, as I would like. Now, what's important about Git is that um, when I have these little uh, hashes of each commit, it's like an ID, right? Every commit has its own ID. And that means that I can, using that ID, I can actually, and don't worry about the how, just worry about the, uh, the what. Um, I can actually move to a different state of my application, right? And if I if I were to do that with Git, all of my files were would be changed into what they were at this point in time. So it's a bit more complex than just Control S because Control S is a single sort of destructive uh, operation. It doesn't store any uh, previous states. It just just stores the the one that you save. Uh, Git is uh, Git actually remembers all of the states, right? So you can change into whichever state you want. Um, so that's one thing. That's that's what I mean by a tree. And let's actually hop into um, a repository on this website called GitHub. Uh, what GitHub basically is 
is that you can have your history of your application and you have it completely offline, you have it locally. Your complete history is actually stored uh, in a secret.git folder, uh, which you will, will have in uh, your project. We'll talk about all that. And what GitHub is, is, an, uh, is a service that allows you to take your repository and upload it online so that both you can check it out later or maybe uh, get, get access to your code from a different uh, device or to just cooperate with other people on your project. So this is uh, a repository of a project that I'm working on. It's called Amnesia Mods. Uh, but what's important here is that uh, you know, when I actually visited the repository, it kind of looks like this. It shows you the folder structure and you could uh, check out, uh, you know, all of the different files. It's like a file browser, um, you know, that, that you might be used to. You can open files, take a look at their contents. Uh, but it's, but it's, um, what's important here is that we can click on this commits um, kind of button and it shows you the history uh, where this where here the history is linear and goes from left to right. Here uh, the history is also linear, but it goes from bottom to top. It's also decorated with, I mean, it shows you when these commits uh, were made. Uh, so you could see that this one was 36 minutes ago and this one was seven hours ago, right? So it goes from the oldest uh, uh, to the most recent one at the top. and. You can also notice that except for these merge commits that you see every now and again, and we'll, we'll talk about those as well, um, you can pretty much read what each commit is and get a general idea of what happened. So for example, here you could see that, oh, that this commit will uh, refactor list mods use case tests, right? So it refactors some tests. And if I click on it, uh, in in GitHub, it even shows me uh, what changed in the application uh, from the previous commit, from the previous state, right? And it shows me in, in this split view, I've got it in this split view, you could have it in a unified view if you uh, prefer that, uh, which highlights in green all of the lines that were added and in red all of the lines that were deleted. And a lot of the times when you change a line, it will take it as you deleting that line and adding a new one, right? And, and so from this, you can see that there was some code here and I deleted this code and instead uh, I wrote this, right? And it might not completely reflect like the how you did it, but really it reflects how the files changed, right? So a lot of the times you will see Git kind of uh, or the diffing tool um, kind of take a lot of weird shortcuts where it like looks at it and it's like, oh, so you actually added uh, just, or you maybe uh, deleted this line from the letter like B or whatever, like from half a word on because it somehow makes it uh, simpler. But don't worry about that. The point is that, hey, you can actually take a look at the so-called diff or basically the changes of each commit. And that's immediately powerful, right? Because if you're not sure what you did uh, earlier, right? And you're wondering, oh, so uh, what did I actually do yesterday? And you, so you could first take a look through the commit names, which hopefully you would uh, name them in this format so that they are short, uh, to, to the point and very descriptive. Um, and you're like, and, and if you don't understand a commit message or, or uh, you want to know uh, more about it, such as, for example, what do you mean re-implement the remaining list mod, mods tests? Um, you, of course, can view the diff and uh, check it out. Of course, uh, now GitHub, GitHub also allows you to, because you have an account on GitHub, uh, it allows you to add uh, comments to, to certain lines in a commit. Uh, of course, it also allows you to, to highlight certain things. And if you, for example, highlight this by clicking the line number, uh, the URL of GitHub changes. And if you send this to someone, uh, it will, you know, put them on this line. Maybe you want to show them something. Um, and, and so that's basically GitHub, right? But 
I still have so so now you kind of have an idea of what Git is. It's this version control system that allows you to save different states of your application. Okay. Um, you also know that you can put it up on something called GitHub. Uh, that that allows you to view uh, your your repository, which is what the project is kind of called. Um, you often when you have a Git project, it's a repository. Um, and uh, you can you know that you can comment on different uh, commits. You also know what commits are. Um, but that's all fine and dandy. But uh, what other powerful features does does Git have? And well, one of those features is uh, branching. And now that we know that you know you can add individual commits, let's talk about what what branches are and and. Actually, let's let's start with uh, what viewing a certain commit or a state of your application really means. So, the more attentive of you probably notice that when I when I move my state to this previous uh, commit, when I when I move into the previous commit, uh, you might have noticed that this green head thing moved there and uh, this commit became green and yes that's so that could probably tell you that where we currently are in this git graph in this graph in, in our history is signified by this head pointer you could think of it as a pointer right so head is where we currently are so now in that case, what is this master thing, right? After all, we can either move uh, onto the actual uh, commit. By the way, on GitHub, I forgot to mention that. Uh, on GitHub, you could also see the hash and you can see it here. It's not the full hash. It's just uh, the unique, uh, because for a hash, for an ID of your commit, uh, you don't have to specify the full, full the full uh, hash. Uh, you only need to specify as much as is unique to your history. So if I have like, f if I were to just type four, four wouldn't work because there is also another commit that starts with a four. Now forty-two might be better, and if there is no other commit that starts with forty-two, then that would be all right. And turns out there isn't. So if I were to just uh, tell git to like check out the state at commit 42 it would understand that you know oh there's only one commit uh, whose hash or an id hash uh, starts with 42 therefore it will use that one right and usually there's like what two four six seven uh seven characters of a hash um and that's usually enough now of course you have the ability to check out the full uh, uh, the full hash there. Anyway, so I can move my state or my head onto this commit and I can do it either by specifying the, and of course don't worry about the commands, I'm just just explaining the overall, the overall knowledge, um, the theory. I can move on, you know, to this state either by specifying the, uh, the hash Get the checkout and then whatever. Or I could what I could have done is refer to this orange thing to master itself, right? So I can use master to to move on top of that as well. Now what this orange thing is is it's a it's a branch, and what branches really are is they're just pointers, labels, that, that kind of point to a single commit. And you can see that if I add another commit, if I make changes and commit, that it creates a new one, a new commit, moves my head there, obviously, because I'm kind of there when I'm making the changes, and it also moves the label there, right? It moved master from pointing to this commit to now pointing to this new commit. And I can verify that by if I do, you know, if I move on to master, I'm just going to be here and not on the previous commit, right? 
So the branch moves as new um, as new commits are added, right? Now here's the thing. What if I want to make uh, my own branch, my own label? So what I can do is I can, for example, I can return myself to a specific point in history, right? Where my application maybe was like, oh, you know, it was kind of ready and before I made like a decision of like which database I'm going to use or something like that. Um, I can move to a, to a state and I can create a new branch and I can name it whatever I want arbitrarily. Um, again, don't worry about the commands, just focus on the uh, idea. So, oh, sorry. So let me call it like uh, Mongo for implementing a MongoDB, right? So now I have this this orange, uh, you know, my Mongo branch pointing to this commit, and I've got this, I've got master branch pointing to that commit. What happens if I make a commit um, while being on top of the Mongo branch? Well, if I make a make a change you can see that there's a split now. From this change, from this state, you could theoretically move either to my Mongo state, something that I changed, implemented, implemented the MongoDB, or you could continue with master. And now you can truly see that they are branches. There are two, they are two different things. Um, and of course they could, and can you know and you you could make make it um evolve in different directions um right so if i move it on to master and come in there it's a different thing right those are different changes and what i could do is you know um i can decide that you know maybe i've made some changes on this mongo branch and i'm like you know what this mongo thing it's really difficult i don't think i can i can get it done so i can actually move to my master branch where the application doesn't even have mongodb yet maybe it uses like a in memory database or some json storage um and i can just not worry about it and work on other parts of the application right and then maybe at one point um, someone helps me with Mongo and someone actually makes it uh, done, right? Someone finishes the feature. Now I have a MongoDB. Um, but still, now I have a lot of changes on my master branch, mainly these three commits here, right? That I would like to have on my Mongo branch because my Mongo branch is now complete. And so what I can do now is an operation called a merge. And much like when the when when this commit here branched into two different commits, now we're going to do a reverse of a merge is a reverse of that. It makes a new commit that you know, th that, that comes from both of these branches. So it takes the changes from, from, this bran from this branch, meaning all these three commits, and it also takes the changes from this branch, all of these commits, and it tries to put them together, right? Of course, there could be some so-called conflicts, and we're going to take a look at conflict resolution in future videos. Uh, but most of the times, this is going to be uh, perfectly fine. And at that point, you're going to be ha you're going to have basically both changes from both worlds, right? You're going to have all all of the changes at once. So uh, we could do that. Um, just don't worry about the command. It's just as uh, as what I told you. Uh, basically, it makes a new commit, and that commit actually comes from both of these branches. But it still is. Um, it, it only moved one of these branches, right? Uh, it made only one of these branches, branches, sorry, point onto this new commit, right? So that means that you can merge one branch on top of the other. 
And what what the difference is, oh well, is this new um is this new commit on top of the master branch or is it on top of the Mongo branch? And that's the, the only difference. If we decided to leave the master branch here and instead take Mongo, that would be merging master into Mongo. And what we did here is we moved master but left Mongo there. That means we merged Mongo onto master. It might be a bit a bit difficult, you know, you just need to probably need to just let it sink in. Uh, but it's not really that difficult. I mean, it's just a couple of changes, right? Uh, sure enough, it looks simple when it's in a graph, right? And you don't need to actually do any commands. And of course, a lot of GUIs, uh, you know, the user interfaces will actually assist you with with that. So no worries there. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention is that you can um, have multiple branches pointing to the same commit, right? So here on this commit, there, you know, master points to this commit, foo points to this commit, and bar points to this commit. Now, if I make a new commit, what would you expect? Would you expect all of these to move? You probably would, but here's the thing. Um, that wouldn't be right. In fact, it depends on which branch we have checked out so just like we can move on top of uh, just like we can move to a particular commit right we can also move or check out a particular branch now granted if i move on top of foo i move on top of this commit because foo points to this commit and if I now move to bar, nothing seemingly happens, right? Because it still points to this commit. What however changes is that now remember I checked out bar. So if I if I commit now, bar moves with me. Right? So it it's it's also important which branch um I, I have checked out, right? Now, if I move or check out uh, this this commit, notice I checked out this commit, not master or not even foo. And if I if I commit, you can see that I ac actually no branch moved with me, right? I'm in a so-called detached head state. No, don't don't worry about that. Um, but that's all it means. No branch moved with me. And the, w why is this problematic is I have no way of kind of like, you know, doing anything here, right? Nothing points to it. So if I like go back to master, that commit is kind of like alone, right? Like there's no way to refer to it any, any, you know, anymore, any, anyhow. Um, and what will happen with this commit is it will be deleted after like 30 days, I think Git has a garbage collector and I'm pretty sure it deletes uh, these. Um, I could save it. And the way I could save it is I could check it out and I could create a new branch on top of it. Now there's something pointing to that commit. So now if I check out master, you can see that that commit is no longer uh, grayed out. It's no longer going to be deleted. It's going to be saved. And that's basically what, what really Git is. But most of your time with version controlling is just going to be this. It's going to be making a branch off of something, making some changes, and then merging it back. A lot of the uh, a lot of um, repositories will have this master branch. You can see that here I have this master branch, and it's the default one. And if we were to actually take a look at, um, pretty sure there's a I think network. Yeah, uh, you can see the graph. Of course, if it's recent, then it might be a bit chaotic. But basically here you can see that that 
from a master, I made a new branch. I did some changes on top of that branch. Now keep in mind, I could, you know, at, at, at any point, I could just change my mind, check out back to master and make a new branch. Never, and keep my changes. I don't even have to delete them. I could like change my mind. I could have three different branches, uh, you know, with three different, you know, experiments and see which one, you know, is, is the best one. Uh, so I make some changes and then I merge it into master. And then I make a new branch, make a couple of changes. And again, I merge it into master. Now here it becomes a bit more complex because I make made a new branch here. Uh, and in the meantime, I also made another branch here. And you could, that doesn't even need to be you. That could be someone else. You know, you both... Uh, the blue and green and actually yellow three people i mean i know it was me all, all the time but um you could think of it as like if three people were to make a branch then this is kind of what would happen and you can see that the green person here made some changes and then it mer then then he merged his changes into master uh, the blue the the yellow person made some changes and they're not done they're still in the process of making changes and the blue person just, you know, did a couple of changes and then merged into master after the green one, right? So that's basically the flow that you would uh, ideally kind of follow. It's the simplest, it's one of the simplest ones where um, you just make a so-called feature branch. Feature branch because, you know, uh, for each feature, um, you make a branch and um, you, you do your changes and when you're ready, you merge it in. And so if we take a look at this commit history again, these are merge uh, commits. These merge commits, these are these are the merge commits. You can see that here it says merge. Uh, so that means uh, whenever there is a merge pull request here in history, that means that, you know, I just merged two different branches or one, I merged one branch into master, meaning I merged two branches together, right? Um, so I think that's enough theory, and hopefully this is something that you would like to check out, you would like to um, be a part of, because first of all, uh, you do get a very cool profile, and you could check out your stats it like tracks when you commit right it could it will show you a yearly graph of uh how much you commit to which repositories you commit uh commit and you of course can join many organizations and um be part of groups and if you're following this t this tutorial uh you could absolutely join the programming with peter organization or the control.net organization where uh, we just built some very nice apps and so hey um, follow this tutorial and at the end I'm going to show you how to join these these how to join these and you will get uh, these cool little badges on your profile and I think that's a very nice incentive and of course um, it's also very great for sharing your code because if you suddenly have a problem with your code there's nothing easier than you know going into the file you know maybe mock data maybe this uh, mod generator maybe I have a problem with this statement here so what I could do is I could highlight it here and then copy the link um, to someone I could I could say you know hey um, this doesn't really work I don't know why and you know the person can not just see the code but he, uh, he can also or she can also see the full context of it they can um, you know browse the the application now, common concerns might be, well, you might be self-conscious about your code, which I would say, please do not worry about that. Honestly, um, GitHub is full of uh, people of all experience levels. And there's no, like, you know, the people that you think would be like super harsh and critical of your code, they don't have time to look at your code. I mean, I don't, it sounds, you know, quite blunt, but... It is, it is what it is, um, you know, those people would never berate you. And in all honesty, if you somehow, and it doesn't happen, I mean, it haven't happened to me uh, for the three, four years that I'm, that I'm on GitHub, um, if you somehow stumble upon someone who's really toxic and they're just, you know, 
harassing you or you know posting mean comments about you in, under your repo uh you can just block people and you can uh, you could even like uh make them you know you could like mark them so that they do not see your projects your your uh files and all that right so it's it's better to have a blacklist right than a whitelist because whitelist would be you have a private repository you only allow some people uh, that's not really to to good uh it's much more it, you know it's much better to just have your code public and then ban individual you know individuals who you don't like which i i'd be pretty surprised if you found some um so that's that's the the importance of git and github now if you want to get a head start also this kind of like serves as a social network of sorts you can see what other people like and you can see that like santa here follows this this person i could take a look who's that uh drax is here uh he he made some changes to to a repository i could take a look at that uh, you know someone start a uh, a repository so there's a lot of uh, cool things that you could look into um so if you want to get a head start um in this tutorial uh i would recommend or if you're sold <laughs> on the concept then i would recommend you to install git um you could find that at git-scm.com slash downloads where you can download it for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, although for Linux you would probably use your package manager. Um, it's 100% in there. Um, so that's that's what you can download. Of course, um, it has a diff an, an an interesting installer that has that asks a lot of questions. You are good. Uh, with leaving it as default values um, it ma with one exception when it asks for a default editor if it defaults to vim you might want to change it to something like visual studio code but i think de these days for windows uh, they, they pick a sensible sensible default even if it's nano you don't have to understand these things just try to install git although we are going to go through that as well um, and then if you want to like really, really get a head start, um, you can start thinking about <clears throat> what kind of graphical graphical client or a GUI for a Git uh, you would like. Um, I'm not going to show GitHub Desktop because I think there is a serious flaw with it, and that's that it hides a lot of things. Uh, but I am going to show you Source Tree, Smart Git maybe, um, well, I can't show you Git X because I don't have a Mac. Um, but I will show you Git Kraken, definitely. Um, and, yep, did I click on Tower? Because I might want to show you Tower. So Git Kraken, it's a GUI that kind of looks like this, right? It's It looks pretty neat. Um, Git Tower is a, uh, is a GUI that kind of looks like this, right? Um, source tree then looks like this it has more of that graph uh, so source tree is actually a very popular one a uh, smart kit that also kind of looks nice but they they have some very common elements uh, and of course uh, the one that i use and that's just a plain old terminal um, here i've got a uh, commander which is a terminal uh, it's actually i think a shell emulator something like that um, or Windows, it's just a pumped up command line, but it doesn't have anything to do with Git. I could just open a plain old command line. Um, and what I, you know, and, and I use Git through um, just commands, right? So if that's something you're interested in, maybe I can just git check out. Uh, same, the, the same, I basically use the same commands that I would, uh, that I did in that visualizer there. Um, so if you're interested in that, then of course, um, by all means, uh, I'll have a video about the, the, the terminal or the command line, how to use that for uh, Git. And if you want to use that, you don't need to install anything other than uh, the main Git. All right, well, I'll see you guys in the next part where I'm actually going to... So so here's the thing, just before before you venture on um, the different parts are going to be specific for a GUI so 
if you see a playlist, ideally you would see a playlist if this video isn't like super new. Um, check out the playlist and pick the, the GUI that you would like or maybe watch them all and then decide. Uh, but I'm going to basically demonstrate the same thing with different GUIs and allow you to, to decide. And what we're going to demonstrate is how you work with a, with a Git day to day, how you make commits, how you make branches, how you merge them, how you resolve the most common conflict, how you interact with GitHub, how you basically create a new repository, how you check out someone else's repository, uh, and how you sync your changes with GitHub itself. So I'm going to show that with all the all the GUIs. All right. Well, thank you for your attention. Um, I hope you learned something new, and hopefully I'll see you in the next part. Bye.